Hey, how's it going? My name is Dustin Hudson, and today we're going to be going over unwrapping 3D objects in Cinema 4D, and specifically bringing those maps and objects into Element 3D. So I've had this question asked a few times, and I've normally just linked people to some various sources, but I figured I might as well make a general overview of the process. Now this is a really simple example, so there's nothing too complex in here, but it's a basic idea of what you would need to do in this situation. So what this process is going to involve is taking our object in Cinema 40 and unwrapping it using body paint. And then we're going to go into Photoshop and paint in our textures. And then we're going to take our model from Cinema 4D and our map from Photoshop and import those two things in Element to create our scene. So let's get started. So here we are in Cinema 4D and the first thing I'm going to do is make a cube. And now I'm actually going to change our window to a different layout. You can either go to Window, Layout, or there's a handy little button over here to change it real quick. So I'm going to go to Body Paint UV Edit. And it does this cool thing where it messes up your screen, so I have to readjust it for the recording. Now what that does is it changes the layout in Cinema 4D to make the unwrapping tools a bit more accessible. As you can see, there's lots of buttons around here, and a lot of them are for much more complex situations, but this one's pretty simple, so it should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to select our object and hit C. And that's going to convert our object to editable polys. I'm just going to hit C, and I can see the little logo changed, and I can actually select different faces, etc. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to this one, select the full thing, and I'm going to go up to the Paint Setup Wizard, and I'm going to click on it, and this is what is going to unwrap our object. So as you can see, this is already checked, just keep that checked, and just hit Next. And there's three different options. Now, these different ones might be best in a different situation, but this one's pretty simple, so I'm just going to keep it at this optimal cubic mapping because it is a square. So I'm just going to hit next, and this next option lets us select all the different channels, and if we wanted to, we could make a separate file for each of these channels. But I just want to do the color for now, and I'm going to keep my width and height at 2048 by 2048, so that's 2K resolution, and I'm not really going to mess around with this number. And the reason being for keeping it square is that in Element 3D, the maps will load up much faster if they are a square value. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit finish and this window will just tell you what it did and I'm going to hit close. So if I go up here to the toolbar and I select the UV poly edit tool, so if I just select that you can now see in this window you can see how it unwrapped it. So if I click on the different sides that represents the box on this side. So this is the layout that we're going to be using to paint our object. But there's a little bit of a problem. Because I select the 2048 by 2048, it's going to sort of squish our UV. And there's a couple ways to fix that. So if I go ahead and hit Control A or Command A on the Mac, that will select all of our polygons. And just real quick, you can see that if I hit one of these brushes, you'll see how it draws on here. If I draw on this side, it'll draw on the box. That's sort of how it works in Cinema 4D. But we're actually going to be doing all of our texturing in Photoshop. So I'm going to go back, select this tool. And the problem with this is, if I start painting on this, the aspect ratio won't match up to the actual object. But there's a couple ways to fix this. One, you could just manually sort of scale it, which might work for like a specific piece in a complex object. But for this, there's a better automated way to do this. So I'm going to hit Control A, and I'm going to select all the polys. And I have all of them selected in this window, and I have all of them selected in this window. So now if I go to the UV Mapping tab, there's a couple different options in here. And if I go to the Projection one, there's a couple different easy ways for it to unwrap it. So if I just sort of click through these, you can see how it's now mapping it different. And for this example, cubic 2 will probably be the best option. That or box, in this situation, they're sort of the same thing. So now you can see that the boxes are actually square, and it laid it out as if the box was collapsed, or laid out flat. So now that our object is laid out flat, this is definitely convenient, but the only problem with this is now our boxes are fairly small. We have this 2K map, and the boxes are laid out so that they're not going to use a lot of the resolution. And what I mean by that is one side of the box is only going to be this small on the 2K map. Now it's definitely convenient to have it like this because if you needed something to go across the sides, you know which side it's going across, you know what part is going to be the top from this perspective. But if you really want the quality to be pushed out in this map, you might need to sacrifice some of the convenience for optimizing the map. So we're going to click on this optimal mapping button and I'm going to make sure the optimal cubic option is selected and I'm going to check this preserve orientation and I'm just going to hit apply. And now the boxes are aligned, not laid out, so maybe less convenient for mapping, but the quality is much larger. 
So you can click through these to get a feel for how they're laid out. So if I click on the first one, you can see that it's right here on this front face. If I click through the next one, it's more on this right face. And if I go to this third one, it's on the back and it's wrapping around and then it's gonna to go to the top and then to the bottom. So as long as you sort of know what it's doing, that'll help out a lot. So you're sort of sacrificing your resolution versus convenience for actual texture mapping. Okay, so we're getting close to being able to actually texture this. So if I go to our object and I go to our material and I double click it and I go to our color, and I look at our color channel, by default, it has made a .tiff file. So you could actually open that up and edit that one. I'm gonna do something a little bit different, which I don't know how convenient this is, but this is just how I like doing it. And I'm gonna to go to Save Texture As, and I'm gonna change it from TIFF to Photoshop. What that will do is it will save out a Photoshop project for you to work from. And just hit OK, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save this out. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this cube, And I'm just gonna hit enter. So if I was to go to Photoshop right now, if I go file, open, and navigate to our directory, and select our cube and hit open, you would see that we just have this gray square. We could guess where we need to texture our areas, but it just, this isn't helpful at all. So I'm going to go back to Cinema 4D and I'm going to select all of our polygons and I'm going to go to Layer, Outline Polygons. And what that does is it will now create a white outline around our polygon edges. And that is helpful for when we go back to Photoshop. So I'm just going to hit Save and I'm going to call this Cube UV. Hit Save and it asks do you want to save changes to the textures of Project Cube UV? And I'm going to hit yes. So if I go back to Photoshop and I go to File, Open, and I click on our cube again, now you can see that our project has our polygons outlined so that we know where to texture. If you need the outlines to be thicker or thinner, what you could do is you could go to Cinema 4D and you could select them all. And if you go to your brush and you change your brush size, to either something smaller, I kind of like them smaller. If I go to about five, if I go to layer, outline polygons, the outline should be a bit thinner. And just hit save. Do you want to save changes to the textures of project? Hit yes. And if we go to our Photoshop file, close this, reopen it, cube, you can see that they're a lot thinner, which is helpful for knowing where the edge actually is. So this Photoshop project is linked to our Cinema 4D project. So if I were to just brush something in here real quick, black, 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 black. And if I was to hit save and go back to Cinema 4D, double click on this. And if I go to our color texture, click on this. And I hit the reload image button. Do you really want to revert to the saved version of this texture? And you hit yes. And now you can see that is updated with our Photoshop painting into Cinema 4D. So that's how we're going to be doing this. We're going to be working in Photoshop and then you save that out and you can reference it back in Cinema 4D. So from here, we're just going to head back over to Photoshop and I'm going to go ahead and undo this stuff. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint in my textures now and I'm going to be using these boxes as guides. So this isn't really an in-depth Photoshop texturing tutorial, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Now what I like to do is double click on this and just hit OK. And what you can do is you can set the opacity to about 50% or whatever you need it to be so that it's not fully on, but you can see the guides. So I have this cardboard texture over here and I'm just gonna bring it out and I'm gonna drag it to a new Photoshop composition. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this texture and drop it right into this other project. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and close this one now. And this is good, this texture is nice and large. And if I put it below my guide layer, you now see that you can see the lines, but you can also see the texturing. And if I just bring down the opacity a little bit more, you can see the underlying texture a bit better. Now there's obviously lots of different ways you could go about this. I'm just sort of gonna speedily go through this and sort of do a time lapse.
Okay, so now my UV unwrap has been textured. Now, I'm just gonna go through this real quick. I'll turn my guide layer back on just so you can see what's going on. And you can see I have the different areas textured within these boxes. And it's okay if it bleeds over because this isn't gonna map to any areas. You can delete it if you want, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shut that off because you don't want those lines showing up in your renders. So I've just got a few layers that I mixed together using some masks and uh, different transfer modes. For the text and logos, I set those to soft light just so it sort of mixed with the cardboard texture a little bit better. And then if you look really closely, you can see that I have the ridges on the edge like a box would have and some light texturing along where the edges or flaps of the box would be, representing some tape. So while I was working on this, I actually saved out a few versions. I'm on cube underscore zero two now. I was at cube with no numbers after it. Let me just go back here to Cinema 4D. If you're saving a different version, the reload button obviously don't work anymore because it's a different file. So if you just double click on your material and you go to the color and you just click on this button, and you can reload your new one. So for instance, I was on cube underscore zero two and just click on that and I'm just gonna hit no for this. And if you hit control or command R, it should render good. So that's basically the main idea is you go into Photoshop and you sort of check your work back in here, make sure things are lining up. I don't know if you saw in the time lapse that I was lining up these tape pieces to go along the edge so it looks like they're connecting because it doesn't always line them up perfectly for you. So sometimes it's a little bit of guesswork going back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is saved and I'm just going to save this at the video copilot models, my models folder. And that's just a convenient way for it to stay linked up in element. And I would hit save, but I would have to save. So I'm just going to hit cancel. But if you don't, I recommend saving it at that location as it helps with elements linking functions as it's much easier for element to look for missing files in those folders. So if you haven't already done this, you're going to want to go to edit preferences and go to files, and make sure this checkbox for save polys from a lounge is checked. And that just allows for Element to look at some additional data so that it imports correctly. So let's head on over to After Effects. Now I'm just gonna create a new comp, Control N, Enter. Then I'm gonna create a new solid. I'm gonna do Control Y, just hit Enter. I'm gonna to go to Effect, Video Copilot, Element. And I'm gonna click on the Scene Selection button and our user interface pops up. So I'm gonna to go to that directory that I just saved our file at, which is at My Models and Cube UV. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, before we go any further, I'm actually gonna go back to Photoshop and I'm gonna hit File, Save As, and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. You can save it as a JPEG or a PNG, but I'm just gonna go ahead with JPEG. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this to cube UV and just hit enter. And that's okay. And I'm gonna minimize this. So now back in After Effects, we have our cube. And if I click on the material, it is blank. It doesn't import the texture file, but it will have our UV unwrap information. So if I click on this diffuse slot and click where it says load texture, and I navigate to our directory where I saved that texture, which was in materials, and cube two and just hit open and now you can see that our object is in here and is mapped correctly if i shut off draft textures it'll be a bit more crisp and you now have your fully unwrapped 3d object in element 3d in after effects so that's pretty much it if you wanted to take a step further you could create a specular map and a normal bump map and it would make it look a lot more realistic you can have it so the tape on here is a little bit more reflective than the actual box piece. And I'll probably go over that in a different tutorial in the future. It would involve a little bit more Photoshop work and creating a grayscale version of the map, as well as using a program to create a normal bump. While I'm doing this, a really quick way to make a spec map is to go copy and paste this into the specular and click on the slot. And if I go to the saturation, just bring it all the way down and then pump up the contrast a little bit. Now this wouldn't be entirely accurate, but just for the sake of having some variation in it, you can go ahead and do that. And you can increase the specular a little bit and uh, move the light around and change the shininess radius. And that'll sort of bring down the surface area of the specular. And if I just hit okay, you can see our box, go layer, new camera, just hit okay. If I go to group one, I can change the particle replicator, 
to a sphere or anything. And just increase a little bit. Maybe scale down the size of the boxes. And uh, maybe I go down to the rotation and just randomly rotate them. And I'm gonna hit C and kind of pull the camera back a little bit. And maybe create some lights, maybe one ambient light, and then just hit T. And that'll bring you to the intensity. I'm just trying to turn that down and maybe create another light. Change that to point and maybe make it sort of like a light blue. And then just hit V. Bring your light down. Go on the Z, kind of push it forward a little bit. And then create another light. Maybe we'll make this one a little bit warmer. Bring that one up a little bit. And then we can go down to the ambient occlusion in the render settings. And just check that box and turn it up a little bit. Maybe increase the radius. And that always just gives a little bit more depth to your scene. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Like I said, in the future, I'll probably go over some more advanced options in the texturing with creating the specular and the normal and possibly some more advanced objects unwrapping because not all of them are as easy as a box. So feel free to ask any questions or suggestions. Just leave them in the comments and I'll take a look. And thank you for watching. My name is Dustin Hudson and we'll see you next time.